Thank you for listening to the Pull It Back podcast. Now here are your hosts, Mike and Andy. And welcome back to the Pull It Back podcast. It is me, Mike, and of course I'm joined with Andy. Yo. Let's talk about some stuff. Um... Of course, if you've been listening to this show, you know that doom and gloom is the name of the game. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have a couple of stories I wanted to talk about first, but uh, the first one I need to get off my chest is I found this article about cancer in dogs. Oh. Yeah. So to start this episode off, we're talking about dogs dying of, of, of fatal diseases. Jesus. Now, <laughs> now dogs... Uh, I guess cancer in dogs is very common. How yeah. common in can are, how common is cancer in dogs? What are the some what are some of the common cancers found in dogs? It has gotten to be pretty common, especially in older dogs. If you would believe it, fifty percent of dogs over the age of ten develop cancer at some point. I believe it. I mean, shit. Both of our dogs died from some sort of uh, Megan's dog Fritz. Had mm-hmm. a tumor on his, like, I think it was on his liver or something. Well, this on one, one says, of his, uh, or his stomach. This one says malignant lymphoma is a tumor uh, of the lymph node, and that's one of the most popular ones. That's what Fritz died of. Really? Like, it got so, yeah, it got so big, it started mm-hmm. pressing on his, uh, like, stomach, and he was bleeding internally. Yeah. Sad, man. That's, uh, that's like the worst fucking thing, though, because dogs are like your. They're your buddies, you know? know, But how the hell are all these dogs getting cancer? 50%. Cell phones. That's that's half of every dog on earth gets diagnosed with, well, not diagnosed, but gets cancer. I mean, they probably have quite a few that go untreated, but. Right. But. You know, because some people are just like, ah, it's just sick. It'll grow up. And then it dies. (laughs) And you're like, no. Ah, shit. Probably should have paid attention when it started running into walls and shit. For some reason, people, you know, there is people out there that are just like, leave him in the backyard. If he gets cancer, it is what it is. Yeah, like, I, would I mean, be, it's I fucked would be, up. I would be fucking devastated if my dog got cancer. Yeah, well, I we were. <laughs> we have, we've had several dogs that have oh, gotten yeah. cancer. True, absolutely. But anyways, um, so uh, speaking of that, I found this thing called PhytoCure. Uh, it's a medicine that is designed specifically for the genetic makeup of your dog and what type of cancer it has. So it doesn't work on every dog, but it has much less chemo and radiation therapy. Go to phytocure.com to get a genetic test. Not a sponsor. <laughs> so I'm not endorsing them because I don't know how it works, and I've done absolute minimal research on them. Um, per the but usual. from what I saw... Well, from what I saw, it looked pretty, you know, looked pretty legit. It looked like one of those small startups, you know. Yeah. But you know, if it's if it's one step to stopping your dog from getting cancer, man, why not? Is it expensive? I don't know. Again, I did minimal research. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, I Welcome read to the, the first page podcast. of the website. <laughs> <laughs> I read the first page of the website and called it good. I was like, oh, I'm going to talk about that. Like I know something about it. Perfect. Yep. That's what we preach on um, this show. So YouTube what, videos, you, you, minimal research. YouTube videos, Wikipedia, and what else is a really good, strong... Our own opinion? I can't think of it. Yeah, yeah, our own opinion um, from listening and watching and learning from Wikipedia and YouTube. Um, <clears throat> what was the story that you said you had? I know you said you had something. So, man, <laughs> I, I was reading the other day. Uh, I guess this could kind of tie into uh, road noise mm-hmm. a little bit. Okay, so n- name a couple of cars you think you could get for fifty grand. N- n- newer cars, even fifty grand. Yeah, like used or, or you're talking about new, n- new, used, whatever. Like you, I put fifty dollars cash in your hand. What what kind of car could you go buy with that? Uh, wait, did you say fifty dollars or fifty grand? Fifty grand, fifty k. Fifty grand, okay. Um, I don't know, probably a DeLorean. Uh, <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> I know, <laughs> I know that's, not, that's not what you were probably expecting. 
Um, <laughs> I'd say maybe like a, a year old, maybe two year old Corvette base model. Yeah, for sure. Um, F one fifty higher trim model. There's a there's a litany like BMW M four. There's a lot. Porsche Macan, Cadillac ATS, a Volvo XC ninety, which is a very nice car. Jaguar F Pace, Tesla Ooh, Model Jaguar. three. Dude, Genesis G70s are fucking legit. I like them a lot. Genesis Genesis G70? Oh, yeah, yeah. that's the that's the Hyundai, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, well they're no, they're their they're own Genesis brand now, now but, but yeah, yeah, it's it's yeah, yeah. Same thing. So, I mean, there's a litany of cars you can get for 50, around 50k or under 50k. Mm. What now, outside of a car, what else could you buy for 50k? Four fifty k. Mm-hmm. Mm. Just do some thinking. liposuction. Uh, I don't know. Maybe <laughs> uh, breast implants. Um, I'm sure you could get breast implants for a lot cheaper. Brand new white teeth. Mm, it's still less expensive than fifty k, I think. So, another thing that you could go and blow fifty thousand dollars on is Apple's top of the line computer. Top of the line computer. Yep yeah, the the top of the line version of Apple's newest desktop, yeah, the, the long awaited Mac, Mac Pro, Pro, yeah, is fifty thousand dollars. Which is yeah, but what is it? I mean, which is more than a new BMW M3 or BMW 3 Series rather. Yeah, but I mean, you got to understand, like the Mac Pro is made for professionals first off, so you, it's got that industrial professional tax. You know what I mean? Like, wow. like you know what I mean? Like, if you go to buy, uh, we we usually use a company called Uline, and they have like you know storage bins, and they have like they basically carry everything for for industrial stuff. Like, say if you want to go buy a tractor or something like that, and you're a business buying it, you're gonna yeah. be paying a fuck load more. Well, just yeah, because I mean, you're a business. I, yeah, I see what you're saying. Like, they charge people outrageous sorts of money, like. At a restaurant, they charge them fucking crazy amounts of money for like a fork. Yeah, it's a professional. Um, yeah, it's. I get what you're saying. Yeah, but I mean, that for a, it's blowing my mind because I mean it's it's available to the general public, so you could go and blow. Like, can you imagine the Apple geeks out there like, thank God the new Mac Pros out, dude? It's like fifty grand. Yeah, you know the stand itself. To hold the fucking thing is nine hundred bucks. Yeah. Well, it, no, 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 no. That's the um, that's the uh, the stand for the XDR display. Yeah. Again, but that, but honestly, in in fairness, for the display that it is in comparison to like uh, Sony and what is it, Panasonic? I think Pro displays. It's actually really cheap. Like. This, there's a Sony Pro display that does this, you know, the same thing. It has like really high resolution, and the Mac, the Mac Pro display, whatever the hell it is, actually beats it in performance and clarity. And it's like, how much was it? I think ten thousand for the monitor. Or no, no, five thousand, right? For the monitor, yeah, something, yeah, yeah five thousand dollars for the monitor. Yeah, five thousand for the monitor, and the uh, the stand is like nine ninety nine. Yeah, so a thousand bucks. But the the Sony is like twenty thousand. They even go up to like forty and fifty thousand just for the display for a pro display. Like the people yeah, that actually use high end computers to do like computer graphics and stuff like that. Like people at Pixar. Yeah, I mean it does say know, it creators does, and stuff like that. It does say it's designed for uh, basically like hardcore developing developers, animators, audio producers. Yeah, I mean it's the same thing as like when they have the uh, like the 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 F two fifty. You know, you can get one that's eighty thousand dollars for a pickup truck, and most of the people that actually buy it are the ones that use it professionally, at least in some way or another, because they have that I they mean, have that yeah, industrial like a, money and they pay that industrial tax. Right. I mean, but damn, man, a King Ranch F one fifty isn't isn't something like that though. That's a, that's a little different. But Wait, a King Ranch F one fifty? Or F- I'm talking about F two fifty. A the, King Ranch two fifty. Yeah, I mean that could be eighty grand. But we're talking about yeah. a car, you know, a ch- big truck that's very capable. Like you, th- I mean. Well, you're also talking about a computer 
that is extremely capable. Yeah, and but you look at how do a whole depth. hell of a lot more with a truck. I feel. Can you? Yes. I think you could do a whole hell of a lot more with a computer. I don't know. Especially if you're if it's your livelihood. If you're one of those okay, uh, can creators can, and shit on YouTube. Can a computer help you move? Uh, yeah. No, it can make not. a couple clicks and somebody will come pick your shit up. <sighs> <laughs> You're fucking worthless. Just saying. You're such a Mac fanboy, though. I'm not a Mac fanboy. I mean, I get, I understand what it's for. It's for like people that yeah, are I get really it too, prestigious. But I, I can understand a tr- a truck a whole lot more costing that because there's like a lot more shit that goes into this thing than a computer. I understand where you're the amount of productivity you could get out of it because I mean, people could be de- designing you know Grammy award winning songs and and you know animated movies for Disney and shit on this fucker. Yeah. So I so I get that it could be lucrative. But I just feel like something like a truck is a little more I I don't know. A truck is a little bit more useful for us because we're not necessarily like creators that need that much power. But that's, that's why we're fucking poor. <laughs> <laughs> I mean you're not wrong. <laughs> So I have no poor. We'd rather take the truck over that dang dumb. Dang. Man, if I'd rather I get a... that truck, get me a big fat dip, and call it a good. I need a new bow. Uh, get you a bow. They're fucking. Those are fucking expensive. What bows? Yeah, they're super fucking cool though. <laughs> this, this, <laughs> have you seen the new ones? Holy, uh-uh. Dude, they do some. Dude, it's like every year they're just like. Throw that fucking bow in the garbage you just got last year, because this motherfucker's going to blow your dick off. Well, yeah, isn't it like the, it, it's kind of like toys when we were kids. Dude, it's like every, the, well, the bow companies are getting to be like the compu- like cell phone companies almost. They're like, this is the first time we've ever put this on a bow. You press the button and it shoots the deer in the dick for you. It's like, oh, they're so they're so advanced now. It's archery is fucking cool, man, because like the bow that I got, I got in 2010 and mm-hmm. it, it does the job. It's it's pretty good. It's a cheaper yeah. bow for sure. But like the new Matthews bows are like so fucking high tech and light. And I'm like, uh, it's like a it's like a new it is like a new car because they're so fucking neat. They'd, Are they fifty thousand dollars? Well, no, but <laughs> they're quite. Honestly, I could prob I'd get more joy out of a bow than a f- computer like that for sure, because I, I wouldn't mean, know what to do with a computer. Teach his own. I would not know what to do with with a computer like that. I'd probably be fucking scared to use it. He'd probably just be w- looking at porn sites, and they just render super quick. You're, You're just like, like well, whoa, three D. <laughs> that's not a three D monitor. Oh, that's like eight K. It just yeah. beams, it beams it directly into your head. Yeah, dude, it's got so much power. <laughs> like burns uh, your retinas and shit. Looking at it. So the Packers. I was gonna move on to football. The Packers uh, just punched their ticket to the playoffs. The Cowgirls Hell, beat yeah. the Rams. That was a uh, fucking performance. I was super surprised they did that. <laughs> I think everybody was. I think like when Jared- the third quarter rolls around. Or Jason Garrett they just had start shutting it down. Yeah, Jason Garrett had something to fucking prove in this game. And he was like, We can't we gotta make a fucking statement. Period. Yeah. We can't let the Rams come into our house after, you know, just beating the Seahawks the way they did. Come mm-hmm. into our house. We got to put on a show. They're at home. Everybody's good. Let's fucking do this. And they did. And I was actually yeah. pretty damn impressed with the Cowboys because we really needed them to win. <laughs> yeah, because Packers did our part. We beat the Bears, so that kind of punched our ticket. And then we needed the Cowboys to beat the Rams to basically uh, guarantee us a spot in the playoffs. But we're still not the uh, NFC North champions or anything. That's going to come, I believe, next week we play the Vikings. Yeah, we play the Vikings and then That's going to determine it. Yeah, we'll, we, we'll, we better beat the fucking Lions. But I, well, mean, I mean, no, 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 no. If we beat well, the Vikings, oh yeah, if we beat the Vikings, it's clinched. And if Seahawks yeah. clinched, yeah, that would make us the second seed, wouldn't it? We could, depending on how it plays out the next couple of weeks, we could take the number one seed and get a first round bye. I doubt the Forty ers are going to falter though. 
Well, they faltered to the Falcons. Did they get beat by the Falcons? I didn't see that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, they got beat by the Falcons on a last how second I, play. How did I know that the Falcons were going to fucking beat them? I was like, watch them go in there and lose to the damn Falcons. It's like they it's did. like these high-level teams. They go in there and fuck about so they don't get hurt and let these trash teams beat them. Like, I really think they do. They, like, throw the game so they can get kind of a little bit of a rest before they go play yeah, serious probably. opponents. Probably. Are they, I mean... I think it's all a mental thing, man. Like, because a team will go. Like, the Cowboys are the epitome of what that is. Like, any given Sunday team. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's the Cowboys. They can go in and beat anybody every day, and they can also lose to anybody every yeah, day. Yeah. Like they lost exactly. to the Jets when they were the, shitty too. By the way, and the Packers, the, the fucking Packers are just like that. And the Pack. Well, I mean, still our record shows that we we got it. I mean, we're still. I was it eleven and three right now. And we're the number two seed in the NFC. So, I mean, we I mean, still yeah, got them. That, I mean, it's pretty... just not very convincing wins. But I could also say the same about the uh, the Seahawks. Like, I think. Yeah, the Seahawks have just been grinding it out. Like, I mean, they only they won by six points on every one of their games. Sunday. They, I think their average margin of uh, or their average win margin is like less than six or less than five points or some shit like that. Yeah. Like and they win by a touchdown or less on every single game, and it's like it comes so close. They just somehow win it, and that's what's been going on with the Packers too. Ugh, fuck the Packers. The Packers. I can't believe the fucking 49ers lost to the Falcons. Yeah, with the, um, we really Julio need Julio Jones. Yeah, I saw Julio last Jones. second just crosses the like the very last play. He crosses the uh, the play, and they reviewed it, and they were like, "Oh my god, it's like just by an inch and a half." And that was the game. It was the last play of the game. Zero's on the clock, and then 49ers couldn't go back out there. Damn. That was it. He crossed the line at z- I should probably watch the highlights for that. <laughs> yeah, that was in- that was pretty intense, man, to see that. Uh, the Falcons, like, even though they're they're shit. Well, who do, the, who do the Niners play next? Uh, I think it's a divisional game. I want to say they play the uh, – let's see, they just play – I think they play the Char- Seahawks again. Do they? I think so. Wow. Hang on. I'm looking I'm looking it up right now. NFL. All right, let's see. Uh week six. Oh, yeah, the Colts no, they are play, the, play the Saints. They play, yeah, I know. We need the we need the Colts to beat the Saints. Why? So they don't do anything. <laughs> I don't know. Well, let's say I the just, Saints have already clinched, so I don't think that matters. Uh well, Cowboys well, play the Eagles. That's gonna be like the well, deciding I factor. Would, I'm I might be a little stupid on that. I I figured it would increase our chances of being the number one seed. In the NFC. Uh, well, oh yeah, actually it could. It could. I mean, saying, if the, because we the need the Forty Niners to lose again. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. We need this. We need the Niners to lose again, and we definitely need the Saints to lose again because those are top two teams. Yeah, because if we get the number one seed, that means we get put up against the number six seed, which is like usually a lot easier game. Which we'll probably end up getting. We'll probably end up playing like the Cowboys or some shit. Like a wild card team. Yeah. Yeah. That, well, Whoever the wild card team. Yeah, well, well, I would rather play the Cowboys. Are than you the talking wild about if right we now. get a first round seed, or if you get the first seed? If we get first or second, we get a first round bye, and then we go. Well, then we play whoever the winner is between the wild card teams. That would be really good because whatever the lowest it could seed be like is, the is who fucking we'll play. Eagles or the Cowboys or some shit. Yeah, that, if they can hold up. But I, the only thing is, is that the wild cards are looking a hell of a lot better than the. The four and three seeds right now. Talking about in the NFC. Yeah. Who are the wild cards right now? I can't, I don't know that. Um, let me see standings, playoffs, playoffs. NFC leaders is the, uh, Seattle Seahawks, Green Bay Packers, uh, New Orleans Saints, and Dallas Cowgirls. And and right now the NFC wild card is the Forty ers and the Vikings. Really? They're yeah. The Niners are wild card. Yeah, because the Seattle Seahawks beat the 49ers, and now they're tied 11-3 and three each. Oh, shit. So the Seattle right now has the NFC West. So that means at this current moment, if we went to the playoffs right now, yeah. the Saints would play the, Saints would play the Vikings, and the Cowboys would play uh, San Francisco. And then San Francisco would probably dominate the Cowboys, and then we'd have to end up playing San Francisco. Damn. Yeah. So, 
Um, and then you got Baltimore. They clinched this playoff spot already. They're going to the fucking Super Bowl. Baltimore, no yeah, for sure. Baltimore, yeah. Um, but ha- have they played the Patriots? Yeah. And they crushed them, didn't they? Yeah, they beat the shit out of them. I mean, well, it was closer than it probably should have been, but. Damn. But yeah, well, no, it's a, it's a, oh, it's a good the, season this year, man. Wow, Buffalo. Definitely a good season. Buffalo's a wild card. Interesting. Yeah, actually, they might. They still have a chance of uh, taking their division if they can pass the Patriots one more time. And Houston. Houston's a freaking division. Holy shit. Yep. Damn, dude. Uh, it's a good year, man. Interesting year. Yep. So Patriots play the Buffalo. Our Patriots play Buffalo next week, and if Buffalo wins, the Broncos. They could right. take the. Uh, what is it? The AFC North, I think they're in, or AFC yeah. East. Well, as it stands right now, Seattle and Green Bay are first One round buys. Two. Yeah, that's yeah. crazy. Yep. So we're definitely. I guarantee we're going to play the Seahawks. I would almost <sighs> guarantee it. Fucking hope not. Yeah. I still, I still hurt from the last time we played the Seahawks I know. in the playoffs. I know, but I think with our defense, I think we could pull it off this time because our defense were a bunch of fucking knuckleheads. Yeah, they screwed up a lot in that game. Yes, they did. Painful. I mean, they let him come back from. People were leaving the damn stadium because it was over. It was freaking yeah. over. Mm-hmm. And then our and defense just back, let him. They're just like, well, well, we'll just let Marshawn Lynch defense. run all over us again. Yeah, I, I don't want to rehash it. Uh, so next week, Cowboys play the Eagles. Packers play the Vikings. If we win that game, we clinch the North. Uh, Texans play the Buccaneers. Bills play the Patriots, which, again, if the Bills beat the Patriots, they could have uh, possibly take the uh, AFC East. Rams play the 49ers. They still have a chance of a wild card. Uh, Both of them do, actually. Jaguars and Falcons play Ravens and Browns. Saints versus the Titans. Panthers, Colts, Bengals, Dolphins, Steelers, Jets, New York Giants, Redskins. Lions play the Broncos. Raiders, Chargers, Cardinals, Seahawks, Chiefs, Bears. God, the Bengals went one in thirteen. Yeah, they're not doing so hot, man. Um, and they're playing against the three and eleven Dolphins. <laughs> mm. That's anybody's God, game, that right is there. Depressing. <laughs> that's anybody's hey, man, game. That's, that's yeah. I mean, it could be. It could be like an Dude, excellent game. Watch it be the best. The, the fucking Chargers went five and nine, and we lost to them. How that's yeah. what I'm talking about. That's bullshit. The Eagles are seven and seven. We lost to them, <laughs> and we lost to the Forty Nineers, and that's it. The Forty Niners are fucking good, though. Well, they kind of shit the good. bed last <laughs> last weekend or this weekend. I know, man. But uh, that's anyways, good. that's enough about. Uh, we'll talk about football. Uh, come next week when the Panthers clinch the NFC North. How about um, so remember how we were talking about five G the other day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, not the other day, but a couple weeks ago. Mm-hmm. Talked about 5G and how it's this new millimeter wave therapy. <laughs> yeah. Right? Or no, not millimeter wave therapy. It's milliliter um, wave, whatever the hell it is. Well, um, they're saying it could cause cancer, man, and it could like, it can make you deaf and blind and heat your skin up, right? Yeah. Well, they actually have uh, what I just said earlier. I kind of spoiled it. Millimeter wave therapy. People don't know about this, man, but it's 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 supposed to cure you of asthma, headaches, and other things of the sort. So, uh, again, it's the same exact thing. Basically, all it does is that it puts, like, one of those 5G boxes that you would see on the corner of, like, a street post or whatever. Yeah. They put it next to your face, and then it, like, shoots millimeter waves. And they, I mean, the scary part about it <clears throat> is that a lot of people call them microwaves, and they're actually millimeter waves. They're, like, really closely packed together waves of uh of uh of whatever it is sound light maybe it's like waves of birthday cake <laughs> i don't know i don't know what it is but it's a wave of something and uh i'm assuming sound i can't i don't know but and it punches through your skull and into your head and then it apparently cures you of all <laughs> kinds of shit punches through your skull <laughs> god and uh so the concerns were, because I did some uh, minimal research on it, uh, it heats <laughs> your skin up, and they're like, yeah, man, the waves are so close to together, and they move so fast, it heats your skin up, man. And uh, scientifically, yes, but not even close to being noticeable on you. So basically, they can measure it. It does heat your skin up a tiny, tiny bit, but so does what we currently have. 
Oh. Like you won't be able to feel it yourself. <clears throat> it's it's measurable, but it's not not even close to being noticeable. Um, it causes cancer. It does not actually cause cancer. Um, they actually have some studies that says it can actually help prevent cancer. Hmm. Yeah, this millimeter wave. So people therapy. are just shitting their pants over this thing and like it causes cancer, but it might actually be beneficial. Yeah, they've had they've had millimeter wave therapy for actually quite a long time now. Really? And now they're just taking that, strapping it on a pole, and then sending data through it instead. <laughs> so um, they also said that it can disrupt bird migration. That 5G, <laughs> it'll stop all those birds from flying south for the winter. But um, that's also not even fucking close to being true. Um, birds use m- the magnetic poles uh, to figure out their... Um, direction i guess yeah yeah at 5g millimeter waves are not even close to being strong enough um to fuck with the magnetic or, or will travel far enough uh to do anything with birds it, w- it won't fuck up their magnetic whatever sense of direction uh it also like i said it's, it's actually pretty weak if you stand like they've done tests and stuff with this 5g thing and if you stand in front of like a car or even if like if you're in direct li- out line of sight with one of these 5G boxes, right? Yeah. You can get screaming speeds, like 1.2, 1.5 gigabits per second. Damn. Fast. However, if you turn a- put your back to the box and you turn around yourself, it drops dramatically. Really? Like you'll get, I mean, you still pretty get pretty decent speeds, like 200 megabits, but that is a substantial drop just because you're not facing the box. These millimeter waves are very finicky. They're very, you know, they won't punch through walls. They won't go through glass. I mean, they won't even go through a tree. So, I mean, you've got to be in direct line of sight of these things. So, I mean, that being said, so it will yeah, not, what, is, what does it do for your signal? I mean, are, can you only get it they're when you're ha- standing right there? Yeah, basically, yeah. They're going to have to put it everywhere. They're going to have to put a little node everywhere, hmm. pointing in every direction. But, I mean, if if you. You said it couldn't penetrate through, like, trees and shit. How's it going to get through houses to give you signal? Are you going to have to put a thing in your house? Probably. To get, like, true 5G or whatever? Well, I mean, I don't think you'd have to worry about putting one in your house. If you have home Wi-Fi well, and you have I mean, fiber yeah, optic. Yeah, that's true. Well, I mean, is that going to be they the, have... the next wave for Wi-Fi? Like, No, no. I mean, it, it already kind of does use the... The gigahertz wave, it has 5 gigahertz, which is what the Wi-Fi currently uses. It might go a little bit higher than that. Like, millimeter wave is, like, super high up there. I don't know exactly what it is, but um, T-Mobile actually just launched their 5G network with their 600 megahertz wave. So instead of traveling a couple of feet, it travels, like, miles and miles and still gives you really, really good signal and gives you pretty fast speeds, too, like between 20 to 100 uh, megabits per second. So... It Damn. also has a lot more throughput, so it can handle a lot more people. So it it is really a 5G net. It's on the fifth generation of um, whatever the hell it is. I guess the fifth generation of cell network. But they're starting from the bottom and moving up to millimeter wave instead of what Verizon and AT&T are doing, which they're starting from the top and moving their way down. So what's what's the benefit of going from bottom up to versus top down? Well, first off, uh, uh, T-Mobile currently has the only 5G nationwide network because mm. they they flipped the switch and they have this new six, 600 megahertz band, and it does give you really, really fast speeds. I mean, it's not a gigabit, but it goes miles. It penetrates walls really easily. Well, you get really good reception. You can't, you can't broadcast gigabit-style service like over Wi-Fi signal. There's not enough. What? There's not enough bandwidth, is there, to do that? To send out a, a gigabit service, wirelessly. Yeah. How? That's what the mill. You talking about? How could they do it? It's millimeter wave. Because, uh, from what I was told, that y- you couldn't broadcast that type of speed through. You know, um, regular Wi-Fi signal. You'd have to have a wire oh, yeah, connection. You can. To run like one gigabit service through, no, you can run it. It's, I mean, it's cause like I said, it's the millimeter wave. It's, it's how densely packed these little waves are, so you can push 
way more data through it. Right. I, I know that. But I'm saying like a, a conventional one, like like I have through uh, Spectrum, you know, we get mm -hmm. per, I mean, we get like the highest uh, just under gigabit. Yeah. But you can't really run anything higher than what we like. I can't remember how many megabits. Um, well, through a Wi-Fi router. Yeah, I mean, you, you can't. Can, you kinda. can't run. Yeah, you can't. You can't really run gigabit service through a normal Wi-Fi signal because it's too narrow. So I mean, you get pretty poor reception. That's why most routers well, have uh, multiple bands. They have two point five or two point four, whatever the fuck it is, and five yeah. gigahertz. So five gigahertz band travels really, really fast. So you get but super fast speed if yeah, you're in that's close we, proximity. Yeah, that's what we have. Like if you're in the living room, you're going to get mm -hmm. screaming speeds on your cell phone. But if you're in yes. the back bedroom, you got to get on the two gigahertz, mm -hmm. so you get a longer range. Yes. Yes. You just get a little bit slower speeds, but it's more stable and 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 whatnot. So it's the same type of situation. But right, right. that's why they're having problems with millimeter wave because they won't travel very far and they're very finicky. Ah. Um. But so T-Mobile went the other way. Right. Okay, so that is they the way to broadcast. That it, that is the way to broadcast like one G or services wireless. Uh, yeah, yeah. The millimeter. Okay, cool. Yeah, that's how you get it. But I mean, they they've they're getting pretty good with uh, their throughput with the lower bands. But you know, the higher they get, because right now basically T-Mobile just opened up, you know, faster speeds to just about everybody, and then they're going to start you know going up the spectrum and then making it faster and faster and faster. But Verizon is trying to make it super, super fast, but only for a couple of people. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I, I'm looking forward to it, man. I'm actually, I actually just recently switched to T-Mobile, and I, I actually really do uh, enjoy them. Yeah, I was thinking about not a, not a sponsor. I was thinking about going and looking at it too, because, like you said, like Verizon is just going to be the the worst. Like, I mean, no, Verizon still has good no, network. It's no, just they not, definitely I mean, do. It, we had AT and T, and they were well, terrible. The thing is, just like the cable conglomerates, like Verizon and AT and T service certain areas. Mm -hmm. So, like Verizon, Louisville is not a Verizon town. Yeah, it's all AT and T. They are the biggest providers here. So, like in Same Austin, here in Austin, yeah, in, in Austin, my Verizon phone yeah. doesn't do very hot. Like, I get drop signals and shit like that. That's the same here. Well, neither does AT&T. <laughs> but I, well, it's just because, I mean, it's because AT&T is such a big provider. So many people, because when I, w I went to work the other day and I tried my AT&T phone, I had a, a, a Galaxy Note, and I fired it up, and it was on that bullshit 5GE, which we talked about on this podcast a couple weeks ago. Yeah. Um, which is all bullshit. It's, a, it's smoke and mirrors. And I tested it, and it was very early in the morning on a Saturday. And I was getting like 200 to 250 megabits per second download that's on wireless. And I was that's like, pretty high. God, that is fucking screaming. But the moment people started waking up, it just started dropping to where it was like I was getting like five. And then at work, I was getting like half of a megabit per second. It was just depressingly slow because so, so many people are on the fucking network. Yeah, so the, they basically put a chokehold on the 5G by rolling it out so soon and everybody in the world's fucking on it. So it's just kind of putting a bottleneck in there so your signal sucks. I think that's... Well, it's not really 5G. It's not right. 5G. It's just a hyped up it's, for LG. It's, it's a... Uh, it's LTE, a, rather. Yeah, it's a 4G LTE signal that they call 5G. They're like, yeah, it's it has more this and that. It's like, But it doesn't. It doesn't have the shit. Thing that, it's like the same thing Verizon called LTE X or whatever, or XLTE, whatever the fuck they call it. Well, I don't know. I thought they were just calling it 5 LTE or whatever. But Whatever. Um... I fucking don't like for LTE. I don't like 4G. I liked 3G better, honestly. Because 3G cuz 3G was fucking reliable. You could have one goddamn bar of 3G and you're still getting a pretty de it might be slow, but you're still getting a signal. I do not miss 3G cuz I, I liked being 3G. with AT&T having 3G meant you didn't have shit. Well, Verizon had a really good 3G network then because my, they did. my Verizon phone was fucking on point with 3G. And then the 4G came. Yes, it was very fast. But it's like now, if I have less than five, you know, four bars of LTE, I'm not getting... My sh my videos are fucking... Look, this is some serious first world problems we're talking about. I know it is. <laughs> so fucking elitist. But, god damn it, I pay for this shit. I work my ass off. Anyway. 
Yeah, and they charge an arm and a fucking leg for it, so you'd expect top tier services are going to charge you top tier prices. Right, right. But I'm saying, like, I could have if I don't Trump have, 2020. <laughs> shut the fuck up. Like, if it's like three bars of 4G, everything slows down to like a snail's pace. And if I get 3G on my like, it goes down so far as to where I'm in a 3G zone. It's mm-hmm. like a snail's pace. It's like bear. It's not going to work. Like I can barely I make I have that. phone calls. Sometimes. I know I have the same problem with my my AT and T phone because I thought it was because I, I worked in a I work in a warehouse so it's all you know metal walls and metal shelves and stuff like that and they say you know it, you get pretty shitty signal in the, something like that yeah so you know it's just physics so I thought it was the phone I had an iPhone and I, and I read all that stuff about Intel and Qualcomm and the, the chipsets and stuff like that. And I was like, well, maybe it's maybe it's Qualcomm because it said Qualcomm was like way better, especially with low uh, low signal speed and blah blah blah. Yeah. So I went and upgraded and got a, a Note 10 because it had a Qualcomm chip, and I saw a bit of a difference. It didn't make a difference. I, it was you know slightly more usable. I couldn't load anything like as far as internet goes, but I could at least kind of make a phone call. And then I had a, a coworker walk up and he was like, "Yeah, man, check this video out." I was like, "What the fuck are you talking about video? Like, how the hell are you loading a video in here?" And he was like, oh, I, I just, I, I, it just does. And I grabbed his phone and I said I was on T-Mobile and I was like, what the, f-? and I pulled up a speed test and I was getting like between 0.1 and 0.5 megabits per second download on my AT&T phone. Damn. And on his iPhone 11 um, T-Mobile, he was getting between 30 and 40 megabits per second. Holy right shit. Right next to each other. I was like, what the, f-? so I went down to T-Mobile that night and, and switched. <laughs> Damn, dude. And I, I've never been happier, man. I, I really like it. It's, it's usable everywhere I go in town. Really? Well, we, were, yeah. we kind of had a phone call about that. You know, when you talk, you were talking about you, because I noticed your blue bubbles came back when you were texting me. It's like, did you get an yeah. iPhone? You're like, yeah, I switched to T-Mobile, and it's fucking phenomenal. I was like, maybe yeah. there's a better, you know, a little bit of benefit from being on a smaller provider, because there's less people choking the fucking service up. Yeah. And I mean they've they've dumped a lot of money into their uh, into their network too. So they also have this thing that like, I mean they have a lot of perks. I mean I'm I hate going on about this because it's still a fucking cell phone company and they're still the devil. But <laughs> they have a lot of perks like um, what is it that T Mobile T Mobile Money? It's one of the perks you get for being a T Mobile customer, and it's like a savings account. Like you, you know the Cash App, the Square Cash App. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. you trade money and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. It's like that, but it's also like an online bank account, and it has the highest interest rate I have ever seen on any kind of bank account. It's 4% APY. Damn. That's like three times more than and than any other bank I've ever seen. So I was like, I am fucking getting on that. Now, Great consumer advice. Now they're just watching your bank accounts, whatever you do. I know they are, but <laughs> I mean, <laughs> what am I going to do? Get a VPN? Yeah. This episode is brought to you by... No, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, di- <laughs> Diamonds uh, are forever. They are. <laughs> Actually, you took the words right out of my mouth. Um, Diamonds are forever. That is true. But what's not true is their worth. <laughs> Fucking De Beers. <laughs> We're going to take a quick break, and we'll talk about it right after the break. Keep them in suspense, Eddie. Jeez. You got to make the you got to make the audience suspensed. All right, welcome back to the Pull It Back podcast. Um, so when we left, we were talking about the diamonds are forever. And uh, they are forever. However, they're not worth as much as you would expect. Um, De Beers Company, they basically control uh, the supply to, in turn to, to boost co- demand. So every diamond that comes out of a mine or anything like that like actually gets the supply gets controlled by the De Beers company. Yes. So if the value of a diamond starts to go down because there's so many of them on the market, they pull back production and mining of the diamonds so that way supply goes up. It's basically it's the biggest scheme like fucked up thing that any company has ever done. It's like the biggest scheme that we've ever seen on the planet. (laughs) 
because diamonds mostly are used like in industrial applications, like right. cutting shit, like cutting blades and blah blah blah. Yeah, that's and what they were originally ex- for. <laughs> yeah, and that's exactly what the. You ever heard of Le'Veon chocolate diamonds? They're just dirty diamonds. Oh, they're chocolate diamonds. Ugh. They're brown diamonds. Normally, a diamond with that color that's brown would end up getting ground up into small, smaller diamonds and then being put on the end of a cutting blade. That's industrial-grade diamonds that they're <laughs> selling to you for three times more. Or not three times, like 3,000 times more than what they're actually yeah, worth. Chocolate diamonds are more expensive than regular diamonds sometimes. Yeah. It's they just they have ingenious marketing. Cut. Yeah, they're like, oh, look at these pieces. Uh, I, I mean, they have designs and they sell it. Look at how beautiful this diamond is. Like, dude, it's a shit diamond. <laughs> you just named it chocolate. And I, and I thought about that. Like, you know how easy it would be to make anything like that? Well, if you got the make right something people that's in charge. Garbage. Yeah, like something that's garbage, absolute garbage. It's it's literally probably worth twenty bucks, and they charge four thousand dollars for it. Yeah, you know what I mean? Crazy. Yeah, because I mean, I was like, you know, if you could do that with, it's kind of demeaning to our whole our mother's whole careers, isn't it? A little, but I mean, it's the truth. (laughs) (laughs) Like, I mean, a lot of people. I'm not. A lot of people make their money off of it. A lot of people. Uh, Make a lot of money off Became of very rich off of it. But a lot, of, a lot of people also died to get these fucking rocks that are worthless. I know. Leonardo DiCaprio was there. I know. he was. That was upsetting. Yeah, he died looking for that pink diamond. And that pink diamond ended up getting cut, put into a ring, and slowly and gently slid onto J-Lo's finger. <laughs> Didn't she have a yellow diamond? She had a pink diamond. No, I, th- I thought she had a yellow diamond. Nope. So synthetic diamonds are now a thing. And so with synthetic diamonds, they actually grow them in a very weird kind of way. They uh, Apparently they put like a piece of carbon or something like that. And You remember those little firecrackers you used to buy, the little snakes? Yeah. It was like this little black disc. And you put it on the ground and you lit it. It <laughs> lit and then it was like just this, it looked like a shit big out. old poop coming out. A little, it yeah, was like a big a long turd. fucking black thing, right? Yeah. It's kind of like that. That's kind of like how they make these diamonds. <laughs> and they add like pressure and, and heat and all that stuff. And it, it, it literally grows diamonds. And they break off pieces and then they cut them and then they, you know, they do their thing. So that it's synthetic. It's perfect. So then if synthetic diamonds are almost, I mean, basically the exact same thing, why, why are real diamonds still worth as much? When synthetic diamonds are the same thing and actually better because they're, you know, more clear than a normal diamond. Like what makes it more expensive? Well, J Lo's wedding ring to Alex Rodriguez was over a million dollars. That's right. That's right. I forgot she got married to that dude. Again. She's so anyways, been married again. She's been married again? Dude, she's been married to like three times, I think. Three or four times. She was married to... Ben Hooflick uh, for a while. Yeah, Ben Affleck, A-Rod, and then some dancer. No, not A-Rod. Yeah, Oh, you know, that is A-Rod. Never mind. Yeah, that I is the wondering. A-Rod. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was wrong. Sorry. Alex Rodriguez. <laughs> so, um... All right, well, let's go on to something a little more exciting, I guess, now that we're done talking about diamonds and how they're fucking yes. raping you. See, um, she, did have a, she did have a yellow diamond, you sick bastard. I thought she had a pink diamond. I thought that was the whole thing. She had a pink diamond, and everybody's no. like, oh, it's a blood diamond. <laughs> no, she's had five engagement rings. Oh. Over a million dollars a piece. Of course. Oh, my God. Imagine being the next guy in line. You're like, oh, yeah, I'm getting married to J-Lo. And then she's like, well, you know, my last husband got me a ring that was $1.2 million. And you're like, shit, I got to get something that's 1.3. At least. But anyways, um, the... Uh, oh, she did have a pink you, diamond. It was to a ben, pink diamond? Ben Hooflick, yeah. Yeah, see, I told you. The Batman. Um, 
<laughs> the pink, but the the thing is, is like with people that say like they they heard a pink diamond and they're like, oh, that's the blood diamond. I, like it's not, it doesn't have blood in it. No, it just means it's like the blood, blood diamond blood. means it was a lot of bloodshed to get it. As right, in, like right. it was in the like they, it was a mine in the middle of an active war zone, like with civil war and stuff in Africa. It doesn't mean there's blood in it because I've actually had that conversation with a couple of people, which is is damaging to my to my health. Um, ever since you remember that, I think we talked about this the other day. That Winnie the Pooh meme. <laughs> Which one? Where it's talking about how each character is like oh uh, some sort of a type mental of, disorder. Yeah, yeah. And then ever since I've every time I watch it or like see it, I think about that. I'm like, God, it is bang on, dude. <laughs> it was like Tigger is ADHD. Uh, the rabbit is like OCD and um, what is it? OCD and uh, I can't remember the other one where he's like, "Don't touch my things." Rabbit. Yeah, the rabbit. It's like oh yeah, uh, definitely OCD. Um, super OCD. Piglet is anxiety. Uh, Eeyore is depression. What was what was Winnie the Pooh again? Mentally handicapped. No, maybe addiction. Oh, because <laughs> he was addicted to honey or something like that. I can't remember it exactly, but. Like I said, seeing that has ruined it. What for was me. Kanga? What was Miss Kanga's disease then? Which one I don't she know. Postpartum? K- maybe she was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Possibly, yeah. <laughs> she carries around her kid. I don't know what is it called when you're like super attached to your kid because like the kid is always with her. The little kangaroo is always with her, always in that little pouch. All right, sorry we had some te- technical difficulties right there. But we are sorry. back um, talking about Winnie the Pooh and how he's a psychopath. <laughs> <laughs> if you've missed anything. Uh, anyways, I, I was going to move on to that, man. Um, I was I was thinking about this the other day, too, because, you know, I think we've had this conversation before where we talked about, like, the military and whatnot mm-hmm. and how how much money we spend on, you know, the Army and the Navy and our protection and freedom. Well, yeah. Um, I did some math just for fun, and you know, have you ever seen? You know what a Gerald Ford class carrier is, right? It's a big ass fucking ship. That's the big bitch. So each one costs thirteen billion dollars. Holy shit! And we have two. Um. So that's enough money to send. 867,000 people to college. Damn. Like a good college, too. Not like a shitty college. Like a community college. I mean, like, send them to, like, a university for four years. Damn. Yeah. 800, it's almost a million people you could send just from for one of them. Uh, again, we have two of them now. So that's, what, 1.6 pe- uh, million people? Yeah. And that's also not including the 10 Nimitz class carriers that we have, each at $4.5 billion. Son, so if we saved money by not building these giant floating cities f- made to kill people and protect us from our freedom, um, we could send a lot of people to college, man. Probably increase health. I'm just saying we spend a lot of money on military. And For sure, That's I understand. Where, like it's important. Ninety percent of the budget goes. <laughs> no, I mean it's probably they say it's it's, it's three- a good thirty or forty percent. No, I'm I think it's, sure. they say it's three. It's bullshit. Three percent of the total budget, but I think I think a lot more goes into it. That's a lot of fucking scratch that goes into that place. Um, but I think if we, I mean, I'm not an advocate for like, you know, cutting military jobs or anything like that because I mean I know it's a big part of our economy and whatnot. But you know, maybe don't cut a bunch of soldiers but the ones that retire just let them retire man don't take any new recruits just yet i mean take some but don't take a whole shitload of them like we are dude you shouldn't have to advertise on television to bring recruits in dude it said in 2015 military spending projected to account for 54 percent of all spending if that sounds about right that's a lot that is a lot of money so that. if we cut back a little, I mean, even a little, even if it went down to percent. like, 
you know, 60%. Or, or, yeah, well, yeah, 30%. If it went down to 30%. Look how much money we would have to fix There's a lot education of system. You know, tax breaks, all kinds of shit. Dude, we would have so much better lives if we could just cut back on fucking military spending. You know, we wouldn't, We, I mean, we probably wouldn't be top dogs. I mean, well, we should. Well, they still. could really, really, they could cut back on the fucking bullshit security monitoring. They could cut, if they cut back on that kind of spending, yeah. there's your, there's probably 20, 20% right there. What, like you could listening say. to all of our fucking conversations yeah. and if stuff? Yeah, they, if they cut out the fucking security, the, the homeland security bullshit, the, the security fucking, what did you call it? Security theater? Yeah, where it makes yeah. you feel secure, but it's really actually, you know, it's it does not nothing. shit. Yeah, it does nothing. Like the NSA, how they don't really do shit. But fucking take your information. <laughs> Well, no, 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 I'm talking about the, uh, the, sorry, TSA. Oh, yeah, the TSA, the TSA does fuck all. Yeah, they doesn't, they don't do shit. They <laughs> they do not do well, anything. Well, they have, they and have not caught really anything. Yeah, it was like, I think it's like a, it's like a staggering amount. Like, I think it was 96%. Because they go in, they, like, they have groups and organizations that go in and test. Like, they check to make sure they're going to catch shit. Yeah, yeah. So they go in and test. They have this actor that goes in with like a fake laptop bomb, right? Yeah, it's like disassembled, and it's it's it's. I mean, it, if, if you know what you're looking for, you're like, oh shit, that's a bomb. Hey, sir, come over here real quick. Ninety six percent of them fail because they're just getting like, they're just pounding people through the fucking line. They don't have time for that shit. Well, I mean, like you got to think, LAX. How many people run through that shit? How many oh, times do they test? Hundreds of thousands know? of people. Because I know a day, they I'm test sure. them. They test them like I think weekly, or even like every other day, or some shit. Holy shit! And you got to think, dude. LAX. That's a lot of fucking people going through the airport, and you're missing ninety six percent of the fake bombs. Jeez. You know what I mean? It's like you, I mean I don't know if that's a statistic to like try and like what if they do catch a hundred percent of them and shit and then it's like yeah we missed ninety six percent of them and then you know it makes the bomb like the actual terrorists like kind of relax a little bit it's like oh they they missed ninety six percent man we don't have to make this as intricate as we should have so they just walk through and then they catch them I probably I was about to put that into the Google search how many times does TSA get tested for fake bombs. Like, that's mm-hmm. probably not a good thing to fucking search. <laughs> yeah, I don't think that'd be the... <laughs> They'd be like, mm? Blacklist. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, then a fucking... Then every day you walk out for work, there's a black van parked out front just listening to I'm you. I'm like, oh, Jesus, fuck. You just see two guys just tucked behind the window. Oh, shit, he saw us. God damn it. Shouldn't have, shouldn't have put that Google search in. <laughs> Wait, Google private search. No, they, that. they still see that, I bet. <laughs> That's probably the one they're watching the most. <laughs> I know, I'm like, ooh, he went into cognito mode. He's watching some weird shit. Oh, yeah. Everybody, everybody gather around. We're going to watch this guy do his thing on ig- incognito mode in Chrome. <laughs> it's like, dude, you're using the Google browser, which Google has been known for selling your information to the government and been... I think they have several of their like uh, coders and software engineers actually went to the government, and they have like really close ties and shit. It's, it's like incognito mode ain't gonna do shit. Again, that's probably security theater. Yeah, yeah. Makes you feel like you're private and safe, but you're not. Man. They, they'll they'll find your shit if they want it. VPN. <laughs> no, I don't think. That. I mean, I'm sure it works in in like in a pinch. <laughs> But if they wanted to, I'm sure they could probably find your ass. Especially if you're using like ExpressVPN, which is a company. Yeah. They make a living on on making you private bullshit. Yeah. They're they're just like, like I'm gonna go well, ExpressVPN owned by Facebook. Yeah. Let's uh let's monitor their shit when they're trying to be super secret about what they're browsing. Let's just hold on to that data. Because it's got to yeah. go through us anyway. So let's just yeah. hold on to this fucking weird dark web shit they're looking up and blackmail them later with it. Yeah, we'll definitely do that. And then as soon as he wants to run for president, guess who's got leverage? <laughs> it's like, yeah, we'll get him elected. 
Get them elected. And then as soon as you get Dude, elected, tech they're companies, like, remember this? Tech companies are like getting on the level of Skynet, man. Like pretty soon they're going to rule. They're going to run the world. They already kind of do. I mean, yeah, they definitely influence a lot. Like mm-hmm. a, way, a crazy amount is influenced by the tech companies, the big tech companies. Like Google, Apple, Facebook, Facebook, Skype. Yeah, right. I actually didn't, I didn't, I mean, for being as much as I read into this shit, I didn't know, because, you know that app called WhatsApp? It's a messaging app. Yeah. So, it's like supposed to be the universal iMessage. Everybody can use it. It's got all these cool features. It's encrypted end-to-end, which makes, like, oh, sweet, that's private. Because that means cell phone companies can't, like, you know, intercept it or, you know, just some random dude in his apartment. Can Read intercept your, text. your text messages and shit, yeah, yeah. So, because uh, SMS and MMS are like super unsecure, and uh, so WhatsApp was supposed to be encrypted, uh, encrypted on end to end. So it's very private. You're supposed to be hidden from the man, man. And uh, I didn't know that WhatsApp is owned by Facebook. Is it really? Yes, <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah. See, I used it. And Chelsea told me, she was like, what the fuck are you using WhatsApp for? I was like, I talked to, you know, Kevin and a couple other people on it. She's like, you know that's used for cheating, right? It's like, what? <laughs> WhatsApp? Apparently, apparently WhatsApp is used a lot for cheating. Oh, nice. Like on your spouse or girlfriend or something. I was like, what? I, I had no fucking clue. Yeah, I wouldn't have known that either. Is it like, yeah, it's like So it's like, it's like Tinder for old people. I don't know what it is, but apparently she was like, yeah, a lot of people use it to cheat. Oh, well, that makes a lot of sense because it's owned by Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people that ha- end their Saturday nights by digging someone else's keys out of a bowl. Yeah, the th- the top three is for is WhatsApp used for or is WhatsApp used in China, in the U.S. for cheating? <laughs> <laughs> so it says WhatsApp. That's the third most popular search. Yeah, is WhatsApp used for? Is yeah, like the top story is WhatsApp a driving factor of cyber infidelity? Cyber, really? They have Yo. to. They have to label <laughs> infidelity as cyber infidelity. How to catch a cheater on WhatsApp using the MySpy app? Wow. So somebody has an app that make. <laughs> Somebody made an app that you can go in and read somebody else's supposedly encrypted messages. Yeah, yeah, it's free too. It's on Android, it so you can j- <laughs> jump to. So that's that's how you catch a cheater on WhatsApp because I guess WhatsApp's a little difficult to to hack or whatever. Mm-hmm. Mm. So you get an app, and so it's probably app. a little more difficult. But if you get this crazy app, you can you can spy. Yep. I'm sure. I'm sure you can probably spy on people with it, but I, I want to know. There's probably like a bunch of fucking steps you got to do that not the normal person is going to know how to do. Jesus, hey, this is a cure thing. I don't. So I don't know how legit it. I cloned my wife's WhatsApp, and I saw that she is cheating with her ex and another guy. We recently bought a home with a joint bond. What should I do? <laughs> <laughs> what should I do? Do leave her. Jesus. Just be like, hey, uh, I know you're cheating on me with the dude no, dude one and dude two, so you can go ahead and pack your shit up. <laughs> but a joint bond, I don't know, the joint bond kind of thing is kind of is kind of rough. Jesus. That would suck, man. Um, but anyways, beyond WhatsApp, <laughs> since we're on the subject of um, tech and viral things... What is up with the fucking Popeye's chicken sandwich? Oh, dude, it's such a fucking hype train. <laughs> I haven't like, even eaten one yet. People, people were literally fighting. I know that's each a other. thing. That's a thing, like on Twitter people and on. Would li- yeah, people were losing their fucking minds. Like some people got pretty fucking stupid about it too. Like they were writing articles about this, that, and the other, and just. <sighs> Comparing black people and white people, and it was really fucking stupid. So it was, was like, racist, all because a of a chi- chicken sandwich. 
it was pretty it was pretty racist it got pretty racist <laughs> I was like, wow. <laughs> like, you know, the yeah, classic yeah, yeah, white know. people can't season their food, which is true. Yes. But, <laughs> I mean, it's tr- let's be honest. Yeah. White I mean, people I, don't know how to season their food. It's okay. I, we have salt and pepper on the table. That's all we need. But yeah, the impact. I mean, anyway, but like this chicken, sa- I went and I was like, okay, I got to see what people are literally beating the shit out of other people for. Mm-hmm. So I went and had it, and I just got to say, I. It's a little underwhelming. It's a good it's a good piece of chicken, but it's not like, oh my god. It's not Chick-fil-A I good. And, I need to go fuck somebody up. Yeah, I like chick it's Chick-fil-A is spicier. Mm-hmm. It's a little bit less crisp. The breading on it's really good, but I like the thinner breading on the Chick-fil-A better. Yeah. Plus but Chick-fil-A is, like I said is a little spicier. The I bun, think... the bun is better on the Popeye's chicken. Though, so what you're saying is if they sure. had a Popeye's bun and a Chick-fil-A Oh my god! Filet. It'd be unbeatable. It'd be unbelie. It'd be unbeatable. Yeah, because it's nice. They wrap it. They do. They do do a better job wrapping it because you know Chick Fil A just throws it in that fucking heater bag and it gets kind of soggy. Yeah, because it just retains all. Well, they wrap it nice at Popeyes, mm-hmm. and it's just. Pre- I guess it's presented better. I don't know, but anyway, like uh, the bun was more fluffy. Oh, I guess. Yeah, it was. It was pretty good. I'm well, not gonna lie, it was pretty good, but I haven't gone back to get one since, and I just went to Chick Fil A the other day. Yeah, I haven't. I that. haven't even gone to Popeyes to get this thing. Um, now you should at least try it. It's pretty good. I, th- I mean, I'm probably gonna try it. I mean, I it's a it's a huge hype around it, so I feel like I almost have to. But I wanted to tell you some of the impact, or like how hard of an impact this has made on Popeyes. <laughs> so, because this has gone so viral, and uh, Popeye's growth was up 10% in the third quarter of 2019. I believe it. So 10%. That is a huge number. And across the com- fuck yeah, across the entire company, that yeah. is massive. Yep. Grew from oh because of that whole Twitter thing. Mhm. I think there was like a Twitter thing. It was like, I don't know. I can't remember if it was like That's how much I don't give a shit about this, but it went it, they this is what started it all. It was a chicken sandwich, and it was like, you good or some shit like that to Chick-fil-A or McDonald's or something like that. And then after that, it grew from 100,000 Twitter followers to 190,000 Twitter followers and growing. Damn. Um, so it has an estimated $65.1 million in free advertisement <laughs> from going uh, viral, including us talking out. about it right now. Yeah, they lucked out. Yeah, it was like all these people getting fucking blasted in the face over the chicken sandwich made people want to go eat the chicken sandwich. They're like, I got to try this shit. Man, people are just getting their teeth knocked out so they can go enjoy the sandwich. Popeye's execs are like, fuck yes. Yes, we fucking nailed it. (laughs) They're just jacking off in their office like, oh my God. (sighs) Where's, Where's Bill? He was the one that came up with this. Bill! Get your ass in here. Um. Anyways, like I said, it's sixty-five point one million dollars in free advertisement from people just talking about it on the twitters, um, and also it it came out as a trial period, right? So they yeah they took it away, they tested it, and yeah, they, they tested like, it, and it sold and out like, in like what the fuck? People yeah, it sold out in a couple of days, and then <laughs> now this is definitely fucking America right here. Man sues Popeyes because they advertised this sandwich and it was sold out when he got there. Yeah. <laughs> so basically, so he sued him for false advertising because they advertised this chicken sandwich, and he was like, "I'm gonna get me one of them," and then got there and it wasn't. They're like, "Oh, sorry, sir, we're sold out." And he's like, "I'm fucking suing you." Yeah. He got so pissed. Yeah. That he didn't get a chicken sandwich that he sues Popeyes. Yes. <laughs> and that is. You know he's gonna lose big time. Yeah. So that I so think he's we should wasted continue. a lot of people's time and his own money. <laughs> Probably. Yeah. Well, you know what lawyer took it? He was like, "Oh, I'm gonna get some free publicity off this one." Well, he's getting paid regardless, so... Yeah, it doesn't matter. He's like, I'm going to go sue Popeyes because they didn't have my fucking sandwich. I think that... <laughs> like, I think you got something there. Yeah, because they're like, yeah, we we need to fight for our freedom, the military. We need to keep spending. For guys like that? Mm-hmm. I don't know, man. But uh, anyways, the biggest point out of all of this, since Popeye launched this chicken sandwich, Popeye's market share has doubled... Damn. <laughs> yeah. 
Holy so crap. now I think they're the I want to say they're the number two chicken uh, franchise. Really in the U.S. right now, yeah, because of that, Damn. all because of the sandwich. It was I think it's I think it's still KFC. I want to say I'm not 100. percent I think I think it's somebody. I want to say KFC and then Popeyes. So just because they launched a chicken sandwich, it's genius. Genius. It's marketing. like yeah, but but Chick Fil A has like they invented the chicken sandwich apparently. Well, that's what they say. But yeah, I'm like, assuming if they didn't. I mean, but Chick Fil A is Chick Fil A is delicious. It is a very good. And sandwich. I was I, like, a lot of people was like, "Oh my god, it's better than Chick Fil A," and I was like, "I'll be the fucking judge of that," because <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm not as biased. Because Popeyes has never done anything good for me. I mean, don't get me wrong. I like going and getting some of those Cajun chenders every once in a while. I do too. And their fries, their fries are pretty good. Their fries are pretty good, and also I like, I like I their. I like their mashed potatoes and gravy. Oh yeah, their biscuits. biscuits their biscuits are, are the bomb when they're, they're fresh. The best. Yeah, they're the best biscuits. Yeah, those butter built biscuits. Those are really yeah. good. But um, yeah, I I went over there. I was like, man, I I had I did have high hopes. I was like, I wonder if this is going to be legit. So I bit into it, and I was like, damn, it's pretty good. It's not as spicy as I would have expected, but it's pretty good. And, you know, every time I've had Chick-fil-A since then, because I've had it multiple times, I'm like, man, <laughs> Chick-fil-A's is so fucking good. Chick-fil-A's got it, man. They got it on lock. Like, There's nobody that's going to come in and read. And- like waffle fries and fucking a spicy chicken sandwich, a little bit of honey mustard. Oh, my God. Uh, or Chick-fil-A sauce. Hells yeah, dude. It's getting me horny. I mean, hot. I mean, I'm uh, hungry. I'm hungry. <laughs> Oops. Um. But anyways, that's that's all I got for the week, man. You got anything else? <laughs> uh, I'm hungry now. Better go uh, munch yeah. on some mac and cheese. I'm going to go down the street to Chick-fil-A. Thank you so much for listening to the Pull It Back podcast, and we will talk to you guys next week. Love you. Bye. Bye.